This doesn't make any sense. You're stuck in a magical fantasy world where you can have anything you've ever wanted, and all you want to do is leave? This I don't understand. But this is movie night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. On today's episode, we'll be reviewing two fantasy films. The first of which is brand new to DVD and Blu-ray this week, the 2010 retelling of Jonathan Swift's classic 1726 novel, Gulliver's Travels. Jack Black stars as Gulliver, a hapless Jack Black-esque character who works in the lowly mailroom at a New York newspaper. During a foolish attempt to impress his crush Darcy, played by Amanda Peet, Gulliver inadvertently signs himself up for a one-man journey into the Bermuda Triangle for a story. As is tradition with these types of fantasy films, Gulliver encounters a storm, blacks out, and wakes up to discover he is a giant on the island of Lilliput. Besides the names and height differences between the characters, this latest adaptation of the classic 18th century novel isn't particularly faithful to the original. The effects used to accomplish Gulliver's towering size over his Lilliputian friends isn't that impressive either, at times resembling old episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, just a regular dude walking around a model city. The humor is what you'd expect from Jack Black, crude and incredibly sophomoric. At one point, in order to save a burning building, Gulliver just pulls down his pants in front of the entire village and pisses all over the fire. Luckily, to offset this crude humor, the film was littered with clever pop culture references, referencing everything from Titanic, Star Wars, and Rock Band, to name a few. And although they feel very out of place in this environment, many of them are funny, so it is forgivable. The supporting cast includes Emily Blunt, Jason Segel, Billy Connolly, and Chris O'Dodd, all of whom honestly do a much better job than Jack Black, even if all of them combined don't really have as much screen time. The movie plays it safe, however, sticking closely to formula and the most popular portion of Swift's original work, which is perhaps why the 85-minute film grossed over $200 million at the box office. It's a familiar and comfortable movie for all ages. Nothing spectacular here, just Jack Black bouncing around being his goofy self with a bunch of tiny people. And honestly, for a lot of people, that might be an entertaining movie. For me, though, this film was far from engaging or impressive. The only saving grace is Gulliver's relationship with Darcy, which bookends the movie. Their scenes together are definitely the strongest in the movie, and provide its emotional center. But sadly, this plot line receives very little time to develop. Gulliver's Travels. Unoriginal and childish, but fun. Well, that's what I thought of the film. Now let's see what you had to say about it in the YouTube comments. Here's the rate matic now to show us how we both scored Gulliver's Travels. A 5 and a 6. This movie was entertaining, and a passable way to spend an hour and a half. But the movie isn't anything special. I thought it was alright. Most of you agree with me, the majority of you really enjoyed Jack Black's goofy humor, while others didn't find the film that memorable. You scored it a good. Our second fantasy film tonight is the cult classic from 1986, Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Starring a young 16-year-old Jennifer Connelly and a curiously cast David Bowie who spends nearly the entire movie wearing a large codpiece, Labyrinth is the story of a girl who accidentally vanishes her baby brother to the Goblin Kingdom and who must spend the rest of the movie solving the riddles and illusions of its mysterious maze to get him back. Borrowing from stories like Alice in Wonderland, Where the Wild Things Are, and The Wizard of Oz, Labyrinth starts off innocently enough with our protagonist Sarah, played by Connelly, enjoying life in the real world, until a series of frustration-fueled mistakes land her inside the Labyrinth, where she's desperate to get back her brother from the Goblin King Jareth, played by David Bowie, who honestly spends most of his time on screen singing his own music and looking downright creepy. The remainder of the 101 minute runtime is spent following Sarah on her quest to this otherworldly maze as she meets friendly creatures along the way and attempts to solve all of the clues and puzzles laid out before her. Although it follows an incredibly simple premise, Labyrinth is anything but, featuring extremely imaginative visuals, creatures, and effects. While some of those effects aren't executed very well, an entire scene is poorly shot in front of a chroma wall for some reason, the Muppeteering work is easily some of Jim Henson's finest, bringing to life hundreds of beasts and trolls brimming with emotion and character. It makes you wonder why, 25 years later, that Hollywood has abandoned Muppet technology. The creatures rendered out in CGI today don't look half as good. Bowie wrote five original songs for this film, several of which even get their own musical scene, complete with the actors and Muppets dancing and jumping up and down to the awesome sounds of vintage Bowie. As exciting and as upbeat as these scenes are, however, they feel out of place in a film that is otherwise not really a musical. These days, Labyrinth remains a cult favorite with people my age, those who grew up watching the film as a child of the 1980s. And although it bears little resemblance to the type of Disney and Nickelodeon movies that kids watch these days, it certainly holds up. It's an energetic, colorful, and hopeful tale about making friends and sticking up for yourself, and definitely the sort of film more youngsters ought to be watching. 
While some of the acting may be bad and the glitter effects terribly overused, this film remains surprisingly fresh 25 years after its release, and a worthwhile trip for anyone hoping to get lost in its maze of fun. Labyrinth, an extravagantly delightful journey for kids. Well, that's what I thought about the movie. Now let's see what you had to say in the YouTube comments. Once again, the rate of to show us how we scored Labyrinth. A double eight. At times, this film is really cheesy, but it remains consistently adorable, and you really can't slight a kid's film for being goofy at times. I thought it was great. You completely agreed with many of you actually setting this is one of your childhood favorites. You also gave it a great. But that does it for tonight's films, so now let's take a look at what's currently playing in theaters with some tweet critiques. Remember, if you're going to the movies this weekend, make sure to submit your Twitter review using the JPM and hashtag to get featured on an upcoming episode. Next week, we'll be taking a look at two classic war movies, Apocalypse Now, the 1979 epic from director Francis Ford Coppola, and Saving Private Ryan, the World War II film from 1998 starring Tom Hanks. As always, I encourage you to buy, rent, or download these films, and let me know what you think about them by voting on the polls below or by leaving me a comment review. Also, in two weeks, for the season two finale of Movie Night, we'll be once again examining the best films of all time. Last year, I shared with you 10 of my personal favorites, and on May 6th, I'll be sharing 10 more but I'd also like to re-highlight some of your favorites as well. So in addition to your reviews about Saving Private Ryan and Apocalypse Now, please comment below with a list of your top five favorite movies of all time. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here next Friday.